It's been about a year since Daenerys Targaryen set the field of fire ablaze in FOF 2.0. It's also been about a year since Jaime Lannister tried to charge her with a spear. Now, not only has this man pushed a little boy out of a window, but he's also killed Daenerys' father. In this video, I want to go over some information that was passed to me through the DM over on Twitter, which you can follow me over at Sir underscore Hunts. But this information was passed off to me, and this person has claimed to have gathered information from all over the internet, and they have some of the biggest spoilers on Jamie Lannister's death. Before we get started, for those who are faint of heart when it comes towards spoilers for the filming aspect for Game of Thrones, go ahead and click out of the video right now, because I've never seen this person who I got this information for in the comment section of my video, but I've checked and some of the information they provided to me cross-references with some of the other known posted spoilers, so go ahead and click out of the video right now if you don't want to know any information about Game of Thrones Season 8. Also, please slap a like on this video, the like goal will be 421. Also. Be sure to subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned all the way. At the beginning of the video, I wasn't trying to bash Jamie. I just wanted to remind everyone of some of the more recent bad deeds that he's done and why this may add a little bit more validity to these leaks. As always on this channel, I take these types of things with a grain of salt. Now the scene involving Jamie's death in unseen air quotations there, but this scene is supposed to take place between episode 3 and 4, so it could be as a cliffhanger on episode 3 or it could be midway through episode 4 just to keep the intensity rolling. But Winterfell obviously will fall. Winter fell the last time there was a long night at the oldest castle in all the Seven Kingdoms. So this time Winter will rise as in the Night King will be successful. So we've known about the spoilers for Winterfell being set ablaze for a while now. This was some of the first set of spoilers that have come out. But during this scene, Winterfell is burning in the background and this also correlates with a video that was leaked on Twitter, which I'm not going to post here because it was deleted on Twitter. But in that video, you could see a group of people having a major scene in front of a green screen and on that green screen is supposed to show Winterfell as the backdrop burning. Now in this scene, Jamie is said to be wearing all black just like how he was at the end of season 7 and he's said to have come barreling out of the woods on horseback and rescues Tyrion, Sansa, Brienne, some Stark men who are wounded and also some Dothraki. Now this was interesting to me because immediately I thought why would Jamie be saving Brienne? So is Brienne wounded? Apparently it was too hard to tell because it was at nighttime in which this was being filmed, but Jamie is said to rescue them all and kill a White Walker upon arrival. Pause for a second, but the fake or not, that sounds awesome and the hair on my arm is starting to raise. Jamie saving Brienne does seem a little bit far-fetched, however I think it may be more so a situation where Brienne is outnumbered. We know there are going to be hundreds if not thousands of whites surrounding them, and the fact that Jamie is going to come out of nowhere just means all the more excitement. If you remember in Season 7, Jamie is last seen covering up his golden hand and seemingly headed north. Now, I've actually done a video on what I think he may actually be doing, where he will double back and go and try to convince some Lannister soldiers to join his side before he heads north, because he has to know that the Starks are not his biggest fans. He pushed Bran out the window, and he knows that Bran is still alive and well, and he also tried to charge the new queen with a spear. So, Jamie headed north empty-handed, no pun intended, is not the best idea. So in this video, I theorize that Jamie will go and try to gather an army, either Lannister soldiers that he can convince to do the right thing because Cersei is basically going to get them all killed, or he could even go to the Riverlands and try to convince Edmure Tully to help save his niece and his nephews. Now just trying to piece this timeline a little bit together more in my head for my own personal use, if this is actually happening and this is Jamie that runs up and saves everyone out of nowhere, this cloaked figure, then that would mean that Winterfell will fall no later than episode 4. This leaves a battle with the White Walkers in towards the beginning of the season, but also it makes me wonder as to what happens with Cersei during this time frame. Since we've already opened up the can of spoilers here, let's talk about the meeting between Jon and Cersei. Now, I was immediately red flagged when I saw that these pictures were so clear and it's possible for us to see exactly what's going on between Jon and Cersei and we can even see Dan and Dave in the background. It just seemed all too good. But if this is real, then this means that this meeting can actually happen with Jon and Cersei early on. I theorized that Jon could actually be asking for shelter throughout this long night. 
and these leaks with Jamie kind of make more sense now. Because if John just had Winterfell attacked, as soon as he got back from parlaying with Cersei, he just had sex with Daenerys, then Winterfell is attacked by episode 3, towards the end of episode 3, maybe even into episode 4, then this could mean that John is now having to humble himself greatly by going to ask Cersei for a place to keep all of the refugees from the battle at Winterfell. Now you see, here's the thing. If John is seeking the aid from Cersei, and he wants to, I'm sure, strike a deal with her, why would Jaime not be present in these negotiations? Now, I know him and Cersei ended on a sour note, but they are lovers, and they've had quarrels before, and they've ultimately made up. So why is Jamie not present at this meeting? Well, it could be, if these leaks are correct, which, like I said, take them with a grain of salt, so most likely they aren't, but if they are correct, Jamie could have died. And this is why he's not present in negotiations with Cersei. And you're probably like, well, why isn't Tyrion there? Tyrion, I think, struck a deal with Cersei as a sort of like an extra scene that we didn't see as part of their negotiations. And Tyrion didn't exactly come through on that deal. Everyone by this point in the series is hip to Cersei's plan. So if Jon Snow does in fact get captured and taken prisoner, Tyrion's one of the only ones who could sneak into King's Landing and get him out. So John wouldn't want to risk Tyrion going and helping with the negotiations. All right, sir. Hunts enough with your ADD. Back on track. How is Jamie going to die? Now, according to my sources, Jamie does not actually arrive for the Battle of Winter. It's afterwards that he arrives. So apparently, as soon as John and Danny arrive back at Winterfell in Episode Two, they get sort of a warning from Castle Black and the Last Hearth being attacked by the Night King. They know that he is fully moving south. The wall has fallen, and John and Danny start to prepare. So in these preparations, they come up with a evacuation plan just in case the Night King is able to hit Winterfell and no one is able to safely get away. So in this evacuation plan, Sansa's group includes Brienne, possibly Arya, Tyrion, Podrick. There is no mention of Bran, and in her group to help guard her, she has the Stark and the Dothraki. All of the members of Sansa's group are successfully able to escape the Battle of Winterfell. They're successfully able to get away from the White Walkers and the Night King, and they're at a camp. While they're at a camp, they're sitting around, there are a few jokes that are shared, but ultimately, Brienne notices that something is up. They are then quickly overtaken by White, and Brienne begins fighting them off, Pod begins fighting them off, this is when the Starkmen and the Dothraki get wounded, but this is when Pod dies. Podrick is apparently wounded, and this is how Brienne is able to get overcome by the Whites for a split second. He stabs somewhere mortal, and she immediately goes to try to get by his aid. She of course fights vigorously, but is not able to rescue him in time. This is when Brienne gets overcome by Whites, and my source says that this mirrors when Jon is overtaken in the Battle of the Bastards, and when Danny is lifted up by the crowd over in Essos. Just want to add in here that this is starting to sound a little bit silly, but this is why I said take this with a grain of salt. Nonetheless, this is fun and entertaining, right? Continuing on here, as Brienne goes down and she seemingly is about to die, or already dies, just as Sansa is beginning to get attacked by a white, there's a rustling herd, and the whites turn around, and this is when Jamie, this cloaked figure, of course that cloaked individual being Jamie, but he shows up with some soldiers and turns the tables on the situation, and handles a white walker upon arrival. This heroic moment is of course short-lived because there's so many whites around, as soon as Jamie takes control of the situation, he's quickly overwhelmed. At some point during this scene, Jamie is able to tell Brienne that she needs to gather Sansa and take them all away because she made an oath, as well as he did, to protect the Stark girls. Brienne does not like the words coming out of Jamie's mouth, but ultimately gathers everyone together and they're able to escape, but Jamie is left there to fend off the Whites. Now Jamie is set to have a few soldiers with him, so they last for a little bit, but there's this crazy, gnarly scream that is let out, similar to how when Jamie's hand was cut off. Like I said, this is a mysterious, anonymous person that leaked this information to me, but it is entertaining. So that scream makes Brienne turn around, she goes Rambo and kills about six or seven whites, enough to get to Jamie, and then her and Jamie share a few words, with Jamie ultimately dying in her arms. Now this next part sort of relates to a video that I did yesterday, which you can check the link down below in the description, or you can check the link right up here, and you can go and watch that video. But in that video, I mentioned that there are supposedly three deaths, one of them is going to be a fake out. So we ultimately think that four main characters die, but then one person is revealed to be alive. This person may be Brienne, because... The last moments that we see in this episode, the last little bit of information that I was given, is that Brienne is holding Jamie as he dies, and she's surrounded by a pack of whites. Oh man, that was a lot of fun to say. Like I say, you take it all with a grain of salt, 
because that was most likely a load of horse shit, but it was still very, very entertaining. Please slap a like on this video. The like goal will be 420. If you could leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this crazy, insane thing. Maybe I should stop taking information from randos who DM me. I don't know. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. Super special shout out to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash Sir Hunts Reviews. Without you all's love and support, these kinds of videos would not be possible. Also, super special shout out and a special thank you for just watching this video. My name's Mark, and this has been Sir Hunts Reviews. If you guys like this video, I was actually sent a episode one outline by the same person, so it's pretty entertaining, just like this, uh, but if you guys want me to do a video on that, make sure you leave a comment down below for that as well. It's, uh, it's an outline for episode one of season eight.